And here we go. Today we're going to be talking about three different types of functions. What's one of the functions? The greatest. integer function, the greatest integer. That's what we're doing now. Then we'll be talking about the no, the absolute value function, and last but not least, the best piecewise function. Oh, that's my favorite. The best. I like. I like piecewise. Because you get your graph pieces. Of a function. Alright, so here we go. Right now, this right here is a greatest integer function. By the way, there's another way to refer to the greatest integer function without saying the word greatest integer function. Yeah. Close? No, not a standard function, but a. Yes, these are really step functions. But they do look like stairs, so they look like steps. Okay? So now, understand. What I want you to do on your graphing calculator is go right here, hit Y equals, all right? I want you to hit the math button, go to the right where you have the number and go down to number five. And then I'd like you to type in an X. Don't do X minus three just yet, just do X. Just do X, don't do X minus three yet. Just like that. Then hit zoom number four. Now, when you do this, this is the greatest integer function which we graphed yesterday. Now, one thing the graphing calculator does not do is it doesn't put a nice little hole at the end. But if you look carefully, you see right there the one, you see how the one's technically not being graphed? Now, if that's not clear enough for you, something you can do in your graphing calculator is you can hit second and zoom and go to where it says grid line. No, no, grid line. Press enter. Yeah, it's second zoom. That formats it. Now look. Now, can you guys look, if you guys look carefully, do you see how that right there technically isn't being plotted right there? So this is where we would put a hole That's not being plotted. Now all of these are, so these would be solid. The graphing calculator doesn't put a nice big solid point, but it does graph the point. Now this was what we did yesterday in our journals. Okay? So this this is the function y equals the greatest integer of x. And by the way, what's the domain? No. no. Yes, the domain, the domain is all real numbers for the greatest integer function. What's the range, though, for the greatest integer? Just integers. The range for a greatest integer function is just integers. Now, this is y equals the greatest integer of x, which is not technically our question for number five. Look at number five. And I'm going to go down, and in red, I'm going to hit math, right arrow, go down to number 5, and I'm going to say x minus 3, and close the parentheses, and I'm going to hit graph, and look at the difference between the two. What's the only thing that you see a little bit different? It moved over how many units to the right? Three. You're like, wait a second, it only looks like it moved two. Technically, it moved three. Right. Right here, see that point? Where's our new point? One, two, three units to the right. So for number five, what I would like you to do is graph this exactly as it appears. Use the graphing calculator, graph it exactly as it appears. Like, what are you talking about? Here we go, ready? From here, we started here normally, right? We're going to go over. One. Two, three. You're going to put a point right here. And then you're going to put an open circle. Then you're going to go up one and over one. You're going to put a point. You're going to put an open circle. And up one and over one. You're going to put a point. And I'm going to sound very redundant. I'll try. But just fall, finish the pattern. Just finish. Pattern very good. That sound, that's the sound of people working. Oh, great. Sound. 
down to people working. Kind of like, kind of like when you guys are at a dinner table and everybody's eating. It's a great time. Everybody's just enjoying the food. You know. Then connect. Key points. Build your steps. Build your steps. Build your steps. That is an example of how to do a step function. Okay. We did the greatest integer function, y equals the greatest integer of x, and then we did number five, which is basically, this is f of x, which is y. y equals the greatest integer of the, of x minus three. Okay? All right, number two is not a greatest integer function. This is what's referred to as an absolute value function. All right. Now you can you can use your graphing calculator to help you. All right, but you don't have to use a graphing calculator. I can tell you where this function starts. If we set that equal to zero, right there. If I said two x plus one equals zero, and I solved for x, I would get two x equals negative half. And I would divide both sides by 2, and x would equal a negative half. I know that this graph is going to start technically right here at a negative half 0. So that's one point I'm going to plot. Now, when you look at our table, you will notice that that point's not there. If you ever want to know where it's going to start, just set that right there equal to a 0, and that will help you know where you're going to start. Okay? Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the graphing calculator. I'm going to hit y equals. We're going to clear this one out. And clear this one out. Now, there's two ways to get your absolute value bars in your graphing calculator. You can hit alpha window enter. That's one way to get your absolute value bars. The other way is you can do the same way we got our greatest integer function. We hit the math button, went to the number. Instead of going to number five, we're just going to go to number one. Yeah. ABS. All right. It's not it's not anti-lock breaking system. All right. All right. It's not ABS anti-lock. It's ABS absolute value bar. Okay. So right here we're going to hit two x plus one. So two x plus one. Then I'd like you to hit zoom number four if you would. Zoom four. Okay. All right. By the way, something you'll notice. You guys notice right here. That point that I tell you, we were going to have at a what? A half and a zero. Okay? However, let's look at our table. Look at your table. Let's actually plot points we can actually plot. I'm going to stop right here. This right here is the table I want you to put on your paper. Negative three to positive two. Negative three to positive two. So look at your table. Oh, no, no. That's not, not yet. Well, that's what we're going to plot. Right here, x, y, ready? We're going from negative 3 to positive 2. Negative 3 was a 5, negative 2 was a 3, negative 1 was a 1, 0 was a 1, 1 was a 3, and 2 was a 5, I believe. Yeah, oh, okay. it's, it's, uh, hold on, where is it? It's right there. I have... I have a good memory. I, I, I don't have photographic memory, I just have a good memory. Okay? Now, we're going to plot these points. We're going to plot negative 3, positive 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 2, 3. Negative 1, 1. Notice, what point don't I have? I don't have a half 0, do I? Because it's only showing, the table only showed integers, it didn't show decimals. Okay? We have one zero one, we have one three, and we have two five. What you're going to do next, you're going to connect these. It's a nice straight line. Okay? Why would you start with a nice natural square? Well, I started with negative three just because I knew that was a point I could actually plot. <coughs> okay? Negative three, if I go over here, blue. 
I'm just using points I know I can plot. I know I could do technically I could do a three seven and I could do a negative four seven. So if you went up, if you went up, yes, you could still do a negative four seven if you wanted to. All right. I'm just looking for points that I can actually put on our graph. Yeah. All right. So right here, if you want, obviously those points are added, right? There's my negative four seven and there's my positive three seven right there. Now the domain, technically, if I'm going from left to right, all your x values are being plotted. So all real numbers are being used right here. If you don't believe me, you can start scrolling up or down and you would see all x values are being plotted. Okay? But as far as your y values, your range is concerned, no, no. Is that an integer right there? No. Is that an integer there? No. Is there a certain point, it's not all real numbers, because it bottoms out, where does it bottom out? At a half. At a half comma zero. Does it get anywhere lower than a zero? No. Here's your range. The set of all y values such that y is always greater than or equal to zero. That's your range. The y values don't go below a Zero. So that's how we write it. I'm going to read it once again. This means the set of. This means the y values. This line means such that y is greater than or equal to zero. And then you close it. And what kind of notation do we call that? Set builder notation. Set builder notation. All right. That's the set. That's the domain. Sorry. That's the range. The domain is easy. Just all go. Okay. So when you guys are doing absolute value, all right. The domain is going to be all real numbers. The range is going to be dependent on where it's opening. Is it opening up or is it opening down? So before I move on, let me explain something real quick. Close it down. Okay. If you had a function that was like this. If you had a function that, that way, okay? It's not this function. Okay, don't, don't pay attention to that. If you had a function opening down, the domain would still be all real numbers, but the range would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The range for this one would be y, that y is less than or equal to 6. Okay? So if it's opening down, that means it's going to be less than or equal to. If it's opening up, it means it's going to be greater than or equal to. So if you see one that looks kind of like that, know that you're going to have less than or equal to. Okay? 